Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for episode 16 of Ask the Howler Cybersecurity Expert Roundtable. This week, we are going to be focusing on a little bit of a holiday theme. But before we get into the discussion, um, if you're turning in for the first time to one of these podcasts, this is generally how this works. Each session, we try to keep it to 30 minutes. Uh, and what we're going to do is we bring on different folks. Uh, across the cybersecurity network, if you will, to talk about the latest things that are happening out in the industry. And we do record these. They will be posted uh, as, as well as the links that we talk about. We will include those into the show notes. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to head over to carbonblack.com slash ask dash the dash howlers to grab the show notes. Uh, and related resources. So with that being said, uh, I just wanna do some quick intros. Myself, Stacia Timpanic, I am a solutions engineer here at VMware Carbon Black. Ryan, I'll turn it over to you to introduce yourself as well. Most definitely. Hi, I'm Ryan Hendricks. I'm a staff architect and manager here at VMware Carbon Black. Awesome, and Ryan is a veteran in terms of Ask the Howlers. So he has been on here before, so he knows the name of the game. Um, and we are going to start out with the first article, which I brought. It's from payments.com. It's called Digital Shift, COVID Fears Push Black Friday to the Brink of Irrelevance. Um, I thought this was really interesting. I actually didn't know where the term Black Friday came from, but it was first used back in 1869 when two uh, guys named Gold and Fisk, they drove up the price of gold, which caused the stock market to uh, a crash. And it dropped 20% and foreign trade stopped. Farmers suffered a 50% dip in wheat and corn harvest value. So I just think it's just odd, right? That over time it's morphed over the decades to mean it's like the biggest day of the year for retailers. Uh, and in such a crazy world, it's really just been completely eliminated. Uh, did you know that Ryan? Did you know that that was the source of Black Friday? I, I, I did not, but I, I, I do find it interesting. Maybe it's our way of trying to replicate the farmers losing 50% of, of them and their assets to us just spending 50% of our savings and everything. Maybe that is just the equality there of trying to bring back those times, who knows? Right, yeah, it's just so interesting. So with all of that being said, uh, and with it being 2020, the second article that I brought on is from Fox Business News. And it talks about with jump in holiday online shopping, cyber criminals get active. So I thought this was pretty crazy. So. U.S. consumers this year are going to spend $189 billion between the dates of November 1st through December 31st, which is a 33% jump from last year. And this is according to Adobe Analytics. Now, one of the things that I think is interesting is just when you kind of look at how do we get prepared for Black Friday, you see different things out there like credit card skimmers. You see things like phishing is going to uptick. You see things like, um, you know, the secret sister scams that are going on. And I guess my question to you, Ryan, to kick things off is, like, are we preparing any differently than we have in years past uh, to protect our organizations against these kinds of attacks? I don't, I don't know. I would hope so. You know, I hope that those retail organizations that have changed over the course of this year, focusing more on online sales, online retail, have taken you know the necessary precautions. So maybe just an influx of having those resources available for things like the rush of the, the deals that are posting on, on Black Friday. Uh, I think some have taken precautions to just start things off sooner. I, I know there's plenty of retail organizations that started the Black Friday sales mid-November. Um, I guess that kind of takes away from it, but at least we'll then have that load kind of go over uh, time rather than being that rush that you always see when something goes on sale online for the first time. And next thing you know, all the bots have bought it and nobody else has it. So I would hope that they're preparing a little bit different, probably focusing more on the online sales for those who have switched to more of an online retail model versus the physical security that they might've had in store with people 
skimming, looking at credit card information, trying to pull things. Uh, so I think it's just a, a shift, but I think hopefully most organizations have already made that transition or are planning for it. Yeah, I agree with you. I do think that this is more, I think infrastructure has to make sure the high availability and, and load balancing is, is ready for the influx of traffic that's gonna come in. But to your point, I think some retailers were smart and kind of said, okay, you know, instead of doing it on Black Friday, it's gonna be a three week period. But I'll tell you like just my human instinct is gonna be, I'm a big Cyber Monday person. <laughs> I'm still gonna expect on Cyber Monday that the deal will be different than it is, you know, tomorrow, which is kind of just interesting, right? Like, why do I think that? It, is it true? I don't really know. It's just something that's interesting to ponder. I also yeah. think about the office episode where Dwight buys <laughs> those like dolls and then he sells them for <laughs> like a ridiculous amount of money. It just popped into my head. <laughs> no, no, most certainly. And I, and I think it's a, it's a difference because when you look at the traditional retail style of Black Friday and right, it's making sure that we have plenty of people, plenty of, you know, uh, personnel to check them out and to run the registers plenty of people there to find things. So it's that physical uptick in personnel at the organization. And you're limited by things like whether you're a governance or some other organization with a limit on how many people you can fit into the store. So you're limited that way. Once you get on online retail, there's no limit and it's all reactive. It's when you have that influx, being able to dynamically adjust your infrastructure to accommodate that new load that you have coming in. Uh, and I think if there's one thing that this year might've told us is, some vendors aren't as well prepared for that influx of traffic as they thought they were. Yeah, I know that, you know, last year with the uh, Mage Cart campaign that came out, one of the things that I saw that was a recommendation that I just thought was interesting was that retailers should actually shop on their own site and like go through a, an actual transaction to make sure that everything looks and feels and make sure that from a consumer perspective, it is the the experience that you want and it's the valid experience, which I just thought was a, an easy tidbit that people could utilize. Uh, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of having someone else who has not been involved test things, whether it's a quality assurance, quality control, software, hardware, it doesn't matter, right? Have somebody else give it a go and see how it works, see what their experience was. So I, I think that is a, a great thing to do and hopefully they're doing it. Yeah, I even have, I've, I've already seen even the secret Santa scams, the secret sister scams. Uh, those are really picking up. I'm seeing a lot of posts on Facebook for that. And, you know, it, it's just interesting to me that that's also kind of revamping. It's the first year that I've, I've really kind of looked at, oh, wow, I'm seeing this all over the place. It's like when you think about a red car, that's all you see is red cars. It's definitely <laughs> something that I'm seeing pick up some traction. So with that being said, let's move on to the article uh, that you brought, which is from the Franklin T County Times called Beware of Cyber Threats as Holiday Shopping Begins, which is kind of on the same vein that we're talking about. So tell me a little bit about why you brought this article up. Yeah, it's just showing statistics. And I think this is information that we know, but it's always nice to have it, you know, reaffirmed or, or you know, some data to back it up uh, that phishing spoofing scams are up. I mean, now that everybody is doing it online, it's become that easy avenue for them to be able to do it. Uh, so it's nothing new, right? We know that individuals, the the person is the one that has feelings. It's not a computer that makes a decision of yes or no, right? It has feelings, it makes conscious decisions. And sometimes those decisions are impacted by other factors. So we know that sometimes they're taken advantage of. And so I, I think it's just that idea that scams are up because we know that really at this time, people are looking for those good deals. They're looking for those next things, uh, especially for any items that are at the top of individuals lists of things that I want. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and even bringing this past the organization, one thing I try to do is give personal tips that are tangible for my relatives. Cause you always get asked, you know, what can I do? And, you know, one of the things that I just did recently was I went through my last pass manager and 
I looked at anything that was um, worth something to me. Like if someone got this, I'd be in deep trouble, right? Banking accounts, credit card accounts, things of that nature. And just uh, actually went in and reset the password on everything. And one of the interesting things I tried to do with each one is set up two factor. And some were a lot easier than others. It was like kind of prompt me out of the gate, whereas others, it was like, I had to kind of go into the settings and see if there was a two factor option. And, but something just like that, it, it probably took me an hour and a half to get through everything. But I will say it kind of gives me that, okay, I've turned on two factor, I've changed my password, I've made it stronger, uh, is I think worth spending time to do something like that. Do you have something personal that you like to do around this time of the year for your personal hygiene? Um usually this is the time when new electronics or new things come into the household. Um, you know, it kind of ties into the next article that we have too, where, you know, seven simple tip tech or tips to keep your family safe this holiday uh, from Wired, where they talk about those type of things. So I think both these articles really hit on that same topic of this is the time that people get new technology. They get a new phone, they get a new computer. And when you're moving things is a great time to kind of start afresh. Um, I've made it a habit myself where I never really upgrade my operating system. I just install the new one and then decide what do I want to bring? Um, I would equate that to your spring cleaning, right? Every time that we've moved, we've had a big purge almost of, I haven't seen this in years. You know, I still remember when I found the whole tray of floppy disks that I had, and I hadn't had a floppy disk drive in years, right? Just get rid of those. I'm never going to use them again. Uh, so I think even when you transition into new technology at this point in time, is a great time to kind of take that step of rather than just importing everything over and phones have made it easy to do. So start over, start mm -hmm. afresh, set things up. I, and I think it's a good thing. As you mentioned, if it has two factor authentication, set it up from the get go. Don't, don't wait, you know, cause when you say, Oh, I'll do that later, then later becomes a year, two years when you're accounts actually compromised. And then you're like, I should have done this from the start. So I think it's a really good thing, especially yourself, myself, our, our listeners who likely turn into the family IT support, right? Of walk them through those things. It's pretty easy. Most of it is meant to have that user experience where it makes it a nice process to try and get that set up. Yeah. I even believe, you know, I'm pretty strongly about using things like PayPal, Apple Pay, instead of uh, you know, trying to advise people like do not save, first of all, don't use your debit card for any online shopping, use a credit card if you have to. And if you're using a credit card, do not store it, whether it's in Google or on the site, they save safe for next time. Um, I really try to advocate that you want to, you want to use methods like those. And, you know, it's tedious to set it up, but once it's set up, it's actually makes the checkout experience a lot more seamless because now I'm logging into PayPal, it has everything, it fills everything in. Uh, and I think it's worth it in the long run. And I also believe in, uh, you know, I went into my Facebook, for instance, and just logged out of everywhere, you know, like see where you're logged in and just maybe if you don't recognize the device, or you're just saying, whoa, this is like, I got rid of that iPad, or I'm not sure which one this is, like, just log out, right? Because you should be able to log back in and, and, you know, kind of clean up the list if you're seeing a lot of assets on there that you're logged into. Right. And I think a good point to that is if you're worried, oh, well, if I log out and need to log back in and I don't remember my password, well, then you don't remember if it's strong or not, which means you might as well just change it. Just right. take care of that right then and there, right? You're already in there. Um, so I, I think another good point that you, you brought up is the whole idea of, you know, that, that kind of refresh of, of pausing and taking a look at it and just saying, log me out of all the things that I'm logged into. And a lot of sites in a lot of places are getting good about that. Um, in regards to the credit card, another option that I have used myself mainly because I've received them, but also if you're really worried about your banking information getting out there, buying one of the online credit card, you know, gift cards that you can just top up and then use it for those purchases, especially if it's a site that you're using for the first time, you don't know if it's completely reliable or, or reputable because it's something that you found then using that versus using your actual, you know, credit card or even your debit card where they might be able to get into some of your banking information, using something that you put that amount on that that's all that that's for. I know that's another practice. That's a great point. And if it's a gift, 
they'll get a gift receipt. It's not like you'll have to deal with returning and all that stuff. You know, you you it's a one and done type situation. So that's actually a really good idea. I like that. Um, and so the last scam, which I just think is just so interesting. So the new PlayStation came out and <laughs> there's obviously uh, folks out there trying to take advantage of it. So what's going on with this? Yeah. And, you know, if you can't tell with my Zelda bow tie and my posters in the background, I'm a nerd. I love my video games. And uh, the new consoles came out this year. Um, so there is an article. It's back from 2013 when the PlayStation 4 came out and the um, Xbox uh, One came out where they talked about it was that rush before the holiday where you know somebody's going to have it on their list. Some child, some grown up were there too, has it on their wish list and you want to make sure that you get it for them. Uh, I almost laughed thinking about it. You know, it's it's before Thanksgiving, so like not quite there because Christmas doesn't start until after Thanksgiving in our family, so I haven't watched it. Um, but even thinking about the, you know, different Christmas movies where it's the family trying to rush to get that Christmas present for someone. Um, uh, I believe it was Jingle All the Way uh, so really, it, it just reminds me of that where everybody's trying to rush and it's a great chance for the attackers or somebody to scam someone of having that up there for a reasonable amount um, and trying to sell it from a non reputable place. Um, so just be aware of that. You know, they're going to take advantage. Attackers will take advantage and, and they'll scam people to try and get them to purchase these with a guarantee getting it before the holidays. And it may not be the best reputable place. Uh, most of your manufacturers have specific vendors that they have linked out from their sites, and it may be a pain to try and get those. Uh, I do know a store opened up today, had a new shipment of both in, and uh, in some of the different chat rooms with my peers, within minutes, all of them were sold out. So I, I know it's hard to find, but it's just be aware of that deal that sounds too good to be true. Um, I think I'll go back to my mantra when we talked about it way before. Nothing online is completely free when there's normally a cost associated with it. Just be aware, right? It might be somebody trying to scam you or get something out of you. Yeah, I feel like, you know, unfortunately, this is a situation where you have to stick with retailers that you know. Like if you don't recognize the name of where you're buying it from, uh, probably want to hold off on making that purchase. Uh, so it's just so interesting that that this is this is the item this year. I feel like this is it. This is the number one item that people are going to get after and, and trying to make sure they can get it safely is definitely something we want make want to make sure we enable people to know that this is happening and and you need to take this a little bit seriously uh, so with all that being said you actually stole my bonus question which was when do you start celebrating the holiday season because uh, <laughs> this is very uh people have very strong feelings about this uh, and so you answered it. I mean, you guys don't celebrate the holiday season until after Thanksgiving. It, yeah. So for us, Thanksgiving uh, is actually my wife's favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. Um, so we always cook the turkey. Uh, we always deep fry turkey is how we do it. Oh. Uh, you know, and, and we just, it, we have to have Thanksgiving before we can make that mental transition. And usually how this works is Thanksgiving night after I'm so full, I just, cannot move we sit on the couch and we watch national lampoons christmas vacation is like the official kickoff now i will state there's only one little caveat on there is there is a specific movie that kind of borders the whole halloween and christmas if you know which one i'm talking about that we do end up watching around halloween i don't i don't watch enough <laughs> it's embarrassing that I don't know anything pop culture related. I have no idea. No, yeah. none. so so we we let it. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas is is the oh, movie. Okay. So okay. you know that is the only Christmas movie that we allow in the in the house, or I allow. The kids will always sneak away with their Kindles and go watch things. In fact, my daughter mm -hmm. told me just the other day that she already watched Elf. Like as long <laughs> as I didn't have to hear it, and I didn't have to see it. Um, I have had to. To deal with, I have two kids in band, both play trumpet. And so this is when their normal holiday performance is. So I do start to hear jingle bells around this time, <laughs> which I'm okay with because it's, it's, our, it's all right. But Christmas starts after Thanksgiving has, has come and gone. I always think I grew up, I played the French horn. My brother played the trumpet and my other pl brother played the drums. And I always thought like, wow, my parents must have like listening to all of us. They were not very good. 
Um, and, and I always think like, oh, that must have been brutal. Just listening to horns around the house all the time. Nightmare. But, you know, <laughs> builds character. <laughs> I also don't celebrate the holidays uh, until after Thanksgiving. I, I love Thanksgiving. I love food. I had my first fried turkey last year. Uh, and, and it's hard to go back. It's hard to think how good it is until you, <laughs> like, why would anyone do anything else with a turkey? Uh, and so I'm glad that we're in the same boat and that we, we agree on this because Christmas music does not start for me until the day after Thanksgiving, but then yeah. it is in full throttle. Right. Uh, Agreed. At that point, it's on the TV. It's, it's always on getting in the mood, getting out all the decorations, decorating the, the tree putting out the lights outside, like that all can start that weekend. Oh, I love it. I can't wait. It's going to be here before we know it. So <laughs> with that said, thank you, Ryan, for coming on and talking about holiday threats, keeping yourself safe, keeping your family safe. And, and really, uh, I can't believe it, but you guys need to join us for episode 17. I can't believe we're on episode 17. You can register at carbonblack.com slash ask dash the dash howlers. It's going to be an executive roundtable, so please check us out, sign up, register, and have a great turkey day, a holiday season, all the above. Thank you, guys. Good evening, good night, good morning, whatever it is for you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Ryan.